I am not a fan of minimalism in bodybuilding. And I don't think that you could fully maximize your physique with just 10 exercises. But if I were to pick 10 exercises that were to put my training program right now, or simply pick 10 movements that I would say contributed the largest to my development over the years, they would be the following in no particular order. But first, let me preface this by saying, if you asked me the same question five, 10, or even 15 years ago, my answers would likely be very different. As someone that's been involved in bodybuilding for 20 years now, I've now progressed and advanced to the point where movements at one point during my training career might be superior, but I've now actually become obsolete at this point. I'll explain exactly why in more detail as we get into it. But first, let's jump right into my top 10 lifts, again, in no order. First, we have weighted pull-ups. A pull-up variation is an exercise that's been in my arsenal since day one of training, literally. I read Arnold's Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding, and he suggested in there to start off your back training session with 50 reps of bodyweight pull-ups taking as many sets as needed to reach 50 total reps. I could barely believe it at the time, but I went into that first workout at 13 years old and I could barely bang out one clean repetition. I literally spent all day banging out single reps until I reached 50 and then I moved on to the back workout. I was about 130 pounds at that point and since then, I've never taken pull-ups out of my training routine. Now, years later at my strongest, reaching a body weight of around 100 and 195 pounds, I was able to bang out 20 clean reps. Full range of motion, full stretch, full contraction. And at this point in my training career, my body had just transformed. I was able to do weighted pull-ups with an additional 100 pounds for five to six repetitions. And I would even do higher rep sets of 10 to 12 with an additional 45 to 50 pounds. Now, the reason that I credit so much of my upper body development to this movement specifically is that as I was able to add more weight or reps to this exercise, there was a consistent progression of muscle mass added to my frame. I can't say that same thing about every other movement. I've been able to add five to 10 pounds to my bench or my squat simply by eating more food and using that additional body weight to my advantage through better leverages. But with a body weight movement like pull-ups, if you're gaining weight, it better be muscle as additional body weight gain through body fat is just making the exercise more difficult. Number two, we have the barbell row. Now I'm torn between two variations, both of which I've done throughout the majority of my training career. We have the fully bent over row with an emphasis on the stretch in the bottom position, and we have the dead stop row or known as the pendule row. Either way, the goal here is to row some heavy weight in the fully bent over position. Now, science nerds and biomechanic experts will argue that a chest supported row is a superior movement to a traditional barbell row. The argument is that the limiting factor in a barbell row is the lower back and not the upper back, the lats and the traps. But the very reason that the barbell row requires you to stabilize the weight is in fact the reason that it makes my top 10 list. Don't be confused. We're not doing it just to focus on the upper back. We're doing the barbell row to build some strong erectors, train the upper back, the lats, the middle back, all in one exercise. Not only that, we're training the back in a position that has carryover to every other exercise. Get brutally strong on barbell rows. Your squats, your deadlifts, your pull-ups, they'll all improve. Contrary to what people claim online, not every exercise needs to be performed for specific isolation. Yes, you need to isolate muscles, especially ones that you need to prioritize, but neglecting big compound lifts will leave gaps in your physique. If I had to pick one exercise that's often left out of someone's training routine and it clearly reflected in their physique development, it would absolutely have to be the barbell row. Number three, that would be the dumbbell pullover. This is one of my favorite movements for enhancing the physique. So far, I've talked strictly about mass building exercises. The dumbbell pullover, however, can build plenty of muscle, but where it shines in my opinion, however, is hitting all the muscle groups in the torso that might not become fully developed, especially if you're only focusing on horizontal and vertical pushing and pulling movements. The serratus anterior or the finger-like muscles around the rib cage are hit harder here than any other exercise. And the pullover is one of the only exercise that works the pecs and the lats synergistically as well as the triceps and lots of other muscle groups in the entire upper body. The dumbbell pullover also tends to hit the lats hard from the front of the body. And anyone who spent a great deal of time focusing on pullovers throughout their career generally has great development that's shown in a front double bicep pose. The dumbbell pullover is also a movement that's pretty much been in my arsenal since day one of lifting. Number four is the high incline barbell press. I trained for years using strictly dumbbell presses or standing overhead barbell presses as my main shoulder movement. And even doing so throughout my entire competitive career, my delts were never really on par with the rest of my upper body development. It wasn't until after I stopped competing that I started experimenting with different variations and found the best one of all in my opinion. The high incline barbell press not only serves as an excellent shoulder builder, but an awesome exercise to build that pec delt tie-in. 
This is also known as the upper shelf of the pecs. Now, with a traditional standing overhead press, you're not only limited to your shoulder mobility, but it's also almost like a partial range of motion when compared to a high incline barbell press. The high incline press allows you to get a much better stretch of the front delts during this movement. It also gives you more stability, which will allow you to lift some heavier weights. And the extra support allows you to position yourself so that the front delts are targeted during this exercise. And you're doing so without having to be limited by your core, your lower back, and the rest of the body. For me personally, as soon as I added this movement in, I was finally able to balance out my pec shoulder development. Not only that, but this exercise had more carryover to every other pressing exercise I would do. Again, not every movement has to be about isolation. Number five is the medium close grip bench press. I call this a medium close grip bench press because it's not supposed to be considered a tricep exercise. Most people think tricep exercise as soon as they hear close grip bench. But here, we're talking about a traditional flat bench, but we're bringing our grip in one to two hands length closer. The result is the arms should be just outside the torso at the bottom of the movement. Again, this is often thought of as a tricep specific lift, and yes, it does hit the triceps a bit harder, but actually what we're focusing on doing here is putting the hands in a position where we can fully contract the pecs at the top of the lift. The function of the pecs is to bring the arms across the body. And if we're trying to mimic that motion in the gym, at the lockout of any pressing exercise, a closer grip is generally ideal. Now, machines that converge are great for this, but not everyone has access to them. Dumbbells are an excellent alternative as most people will press them closer at the top and wider at the bottom. But as I mentioned earlier, an exercise might be ideal for one stage in your training and not in another stage. Back when I was pressing 50 or even 60 pound dumbbells, I'd likely argue that the dumbbell press is a superior movement. But now that I've gone as high as using 150 pound dumbbells for six to 10 repetitions, when the weights get heavier on those dumbbells, the shape and the size of them change as well. And no matter how strong you are or how many reps you can perform, it's almost impossible to get full range of motion when pressing dumbbells that big. Not only that, but even getting them in position can be more difficult than the set itself. But again, this doesn't apply to everyone and really only applies once you pass the 100 to 120 pound dumbbells. Number six, we have the Romanian deadlift. While many people categorize this as a glute or a hamstring specific exercise, this movement is such an important one to the development of my physique that I categorize this as a full body mass movement. It's responsible for the development of my traps, my back, and my legs. And in my opinion, it is by far the superior hip hinge movement if your goal is specifically hypertrophy. The constant tension on the posterior chain, as well as the emphasis on the stretch position, that builds much more muscle rep for rep when compared to a conventional deadlift. And the best part is, even with a fraction of the weight. This makes it a much better movement, especially with longevity in mind. It's one that I've been able to keep in my arsenal from day one until now. Now, compare that with a conventional deadlift, with all my years of training, has racked up some years of wear and tear. And for me, doing that lift places additional risk for injury with no additional benefit. Number seven, we have a very unconventional lift. And if you asked me in my early years of training, I would never say would make the cut. We have the Zercher squat. This movement being the only free weight squat variation that has continuously allowed me to train my quads hard without the additional wear and tear on the knees or lower back. In my early years of training, I built my quads and my lower body off a traditional barbell squat. Now, when you train big compound lifts consistently over years and years, eventually you'll run into some overuse issues and some wear and tear to the body. It doesn't mean you should expect injuries, but some issues will pop up from time to time and this is just part of the game. But as you become more advanced, the smartest thing to do is seek out alternatives to that movement, ones that allow you to train pain-free and to continue progressing. While I'll never disagree that a free weight barbell squat is a great mass building exercise, for me personally, at this stage in the game, a regular barbell back squat causes more knee and lower back issues than necessary. And over time, I've acquired small aches and pains from training this lift. I've also had issues with even front squats or safety squat bar squats. But out of all these variations, the Zercher squat is in fact the one that has never caused me any of these issues. I've gone as high as three plates on the Zercher squat, and that still causes less knee and lower back issues than even one plate on a traditional back squat for me. Not to mention holding the bar in this position, keeping a nice upright torso, and burying those squats. That has gotten me more quad specific training than any other exercise in the gym. It's a movement that I wish I had done a lot more early in my career, but really one that I only seriously incorporated after almost 15 years of lifting. Number eight, we have an easy bar skull crusher. Now the majority of exercises listed so far are big compound movements. After all, mass gain training is my specialty and I'm always in favor of exercises that work a large amount of muscles in one exercise. But of course, my main goal has always been complete physique development. And if there wasn't any isolation movements in this exercise list, we would definitely be neglecting body parts and leaving gaps in the physique. 
The Easy Bar Skull Crusher is again a movement that's been in my toolbox since day one of lifting. And I would say it's absolutely responsible for the majority of my tricep development. There's been years where it's the only isolation exercise I've used for triceps. And my experience is very similar to what I talked about on pull-ups. As my strength improved on skull crushers, so did my arm development. Not only that, but my strength progression on the Easy Bar Skull Crusher has transferred to all my other pressing exercises, including bench presses and overhead presses. And stronger numbers on both of those lifts allowed me to train my pecs and my delts harder. This is another great example of the carryover effect from each exercise. Now, even if you can argue that another tricep exercise is better from a biomechanic standpoint, you can't dismiss the benefits of the carryover effect. You also can't dismiss the results. And my arms have grown consistently over the years, all while skull crushers have been the primary exercise. Now, of course, they get a bad rap as far as elbow safety goes, but I found that as long as you're inserting them into your training session properly, and not placing them as the first exercise when your joints and muscles aren't warm, you can get all the additional benefits out of this exercise without the increased wear and tear. Number nine, we have the braced incline lateral raise. Again, for complete physique development, we don't want any gaps. And if you followed all the other exercises on this list so far, you likely will make significant improvement to the entire physique. But the complete development that you're after, if you're a bodybuilder, is gonna come from these smaller detail movements. Something like the side delts, they need to be trained directly for full development. And if you've bought into the idea that overhead presses are all you need for full development, I'm sorry to disappoint you. At some point, you will realize that you spent all this time building a massive overhead press, but you're still underwhelmed with your physique development. I was there myself at one point, and it wasn't until after I prioritized lateral raises as my shoulder movement that they finally began to grow. At the same time, I was even backing off the overhead pressing. Today, the only direct pressing exercises I do for the shoulders are about two to three sets of the high incline barbell press. And the rest of my shoulder training is literally all lateral raises. And when I do my lateral raises, the majority of the time, I perform them on an incline bench, keeping the lower back in place, and forcing the side delts to do the majority of the work without additional momentum. This gives me a much higher stimulus to the target muscle without having to use excessive weight. There was a time where I was lateral raising 50 plus pound dumbbells and I had decent shoulder development. Then there was a time that I finally added in a stricter variation and got more out of using 25 to 30 pound dumbbells than I ever did with 50. And finally, number 10, we have the trap bar deadlift. If you asked me 10 years ago what I thought about this movement, I would have said it's for beginners. I would have said it's like training wheels for the deadlift, or I would have said it's just a useless exercise. But again, different perspective at different stages in the game. The trap bar is a much lower risk movement than a conventional barbell deadlift. Pulling from inside the bar keeps you in a much more upright position. This allows for more of a squat deadlift hybrid, making it not only great for the entire posterior chain development, but also additional quad and glute development. Not to mention that this exercise is also one that's had significant mass to my traps and back development. I don't pull extremely heavy off the floor anymore, but if I do, it's with a trap bar. And if I could go back and never conventional deadlift with a barbell heavy, and focus on heavy trap bar deadlifts and Romanian deadlifts with a straight bar, if I did that for my entire training career, I'm willing to bet that I would have had equally as good results, maybe even better. And I'm definitely willing to bet that I would have had less aches and pains along the way. That's my top 10 lifts. That doesn't mean that they're the top 10 universal exercises for everyone, but the majority of people, they can take these exercises, focus on them, and they're likely to see major improvements to their entire physique. But I'm curious to know what's your top 10. So list them down below. And if you want to know more about the exact training programs that I use and recommend to build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, all my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you guys want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.